What's up everyone, my name is Joe and welcome to Film Focused. This is the second video in the DIY series on developing and scanning film at home. In this video, we will be going over how to develop black and white film. If you haven't already and want to check out the first part of this series, I'll go ahead and try and link the video in the top corner here. Now before we actually get started developing, you're going to have to gather everything you need to get the job done. Once you have everything ready to go, the first thing you're going to need to do is actually get your film into the developing tank. This is the only part of the process that has to be done in total darkness, so you're going to need a changing bag or a light tight room in your house. You're also going to need a pair of scissors. Now, because this process has to be done in total darkness, I can't show you with a live roll of film how to actually get the film onto the reel that goes in the tank. But I do have this roll of Ektar 100 that I accidentally exposed to the sun when I was shooting it, so the entire roll is really wasted. Don't get distracted by the fact that this is color film. It works the same way as it would with a black and white roll. I'm just simply showing you how to get it onto the reel and get it into the tank safely. Before I get started, I'd like to make another thing clear. I'm loading a roll of 120 film onto this film reel. If I were doing this with 35mm, the process would be exactly the same. The only difference would be really getting the film out of the canister, and the way you would do that would be with a bottle opener. There's also this little um, kind of curved section here on 35mm film. You'd want to cut that so that you have a perfectly flat edge before you start loading this onto the film reel. Alright, so let's get into it. <clears throat> First you open the roll, and you can either pry this open with your fingers or maybe start with an edge already cut with your pair of scissors just to make things a little bit easier, doesn't matter. Um, you might want to go ahead and do a little bit of prep before actually opening this in the dark because sometimes they can be a little tricky as you can see this one I'm doing in broad daylight and it's giving me a little bit of trouble. Once you have the film open you're going to want to roll it out with your fingers inside until you actually feel the film and then I like to tear this piece off and just throw it on the ground. You can see here, this is where the film actually is, and I like to make a fold in the paper just so I don't accidentally start loading the paper on instead of the film. Now this should be done before you actually get into the darkness, but you can see this is set for one, um, excuse me, this is set for 35 millimeter. You want to get it set for 120, so I'm going to twist it and then lock it back into place. You can see these thick arrows or kind of little edges, that's where the film is going to be loaded into. And you can see these little like steel balls right here. The film's going to want to roll over that and that helps actually wind the film onto the reel once we get it started. So once the film's open, you have your film reel ready to go. You're going to pull out a little edge of it and kind of hold it up with your fingertips. You then want to have whichever end that you're loading the film onto, you want the flat edge in that direction. So I'm loading with my right hand, so I want these flat edges facing to the right. Then gonna very carefully load the film into that little slot and slide it in. And I like to help out the film a little bit and help it slide over. Your fingerprints aren't gonna hurt the film once it's in the developing process because you're gonna wash it with water before actually putting any chemicals onto the film. So once you feel that the film has started to run into the reel, you're then gonna f have your thumbs find the little flat edges of the reel here and then kind of move them slightly down. And I like to pull the reel, or excuse me, the roll of film under my pinkies um, to help guide the film into the reel. And from here, you're simply gonna continue twisting until all of the film is onto the film reel. And this may sound a little silly, but I actually find this process more difficult in the light just because I'm so used to feeling the film in the dark when I'm doing this. Now, once you get to the end of the roll, you'll feel it because you won't be able to turn 
the film any further, what you're going to do is actually grab the film with two fingers here and tear the rest of the paper off. Then this little sticky end, you're going to want to put it right back onto itself. Some people develop the film with this still on. I don't like to. So what I like to do is hold the edge like this, take your scissors and run them along your fingers, but be sure not to actually put the scissors over top of your fingers, run them alongside of them. And then you're going to want to cut the film. Once that edge is done, you can turn the reel a few more times and you can see that the film is completely on the reel. Now run your fingers over it just a little bit to make sure that the um, entire edge of the film is nice and laying flat. If it's not, you can simply just grab the end and take the uh, entire roll back out and do the process over again. Be careful um, and take your time with this as it can be a little intimidating being in the dark for a long amount of time or not being able to see your film if it's in a changing bag. But just trust the process, it does, it does work. Um, and it might take one or two times before you really start to get comfortable doing this. Now, once the film is all the way in the reel, you're gonna put it into the film tank and you're gonna wanna make sure that this little um, column here is standing nice and vertically. So you can just press the film in, take the lid and put it on top with the funnel, the nose of the funnel going directly into that little cylinder. And then you're gonna twist it to close it. Once it's in here, it is safe to be in the light so you can turn the lights back on and clean up your mess. Once your film is safely in the developing tank, the rest of this process can be done in your kitchen or your bathroom or your garage sink. One of the best parts about developing black and white film is that it can be done at room temperature, unlike the C41 and the E6 process for color film. Now there are five steps to the actual development process when you're doing black and white film. There's the initial wash, the development, the stop bath, which is really just water, the fixing agent, and then the final rinse. In total, this shouldn't take longer than 30 or 40 minutes. Another great part of developing black and white film is that it's kind of hard to mess it up as long as you're following the instructions. You can see here I'm using Kodak D76 and I'm using a one-to-one -one dilution meaning I'm using one part of developer and then one equal part of water to dilute the developer. This means I cannot reuse this developer and I wouldn't recommend that anyways. The sweet spot for this developer is between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. For T-Max 400, which is my favorite film, I would develop it for 11 minutes if the solution was at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Diluting your developer does two things. First and foremost, it saves you money because you're not using the same volume of developer that's necessary per roll of film. By diluting it, you're getting more development power per gallon of solution. It also makes the development solution safer for your film. If you accidentally overdevelop by maybe a minute, your negatives aren't going to be ruined by any means. The first step of the development process is a one minute pre-wash at room temperature. But before we do that, we want to dilute our developer first. So what we would do is we take our developer and we would take our beaker. This roll of film takes 500 milliliters of solution to develop. So I'm going to take 250 milliliters of developer and pour it into the beaker. Once I've done that, I will check the temperature and I will adjust my tap water accordingly to make sure that it matches whatever temperature I want to develop the film at. So once this is done and I've diluted my developer with tap water, I then read the temperature and right now it says 72 degrees. So according to the D76 chart, that means we would develop for 10 minutes. Now I take note of that and I just set this aside. Once we know how long the development process is going to take, we can fill this tank with just tap water and then start the pre-wash. Once that one minute is up, you would turn the tap back on and you would pour the water that's in the tank down the drain. Whenever you're pouring chemicals down the drain or anything that's washing the film, you always wanna have the tap running. Always, always, always. Once the pre-wash is safely rinsed down the drain, you can set your timer to 10 minutes and pour your developer into the tank.
while you're pouring in your developer, make sure you start your timer because that developer is already starting the process on the film as it's being poured in. Now, you wanna agitate your film while it's developing. And you don't wanna do this more than maybe two or three times every minute. If you were using one of the metal tanks that I showed you in the last video, you'd simply take the tank and turn it upside down like this a few times. You can do that with these Patterson tanks, but I like this little spindle that simply turns the film inside the tank a little bit better. That makes sure that the developer is getting into every little nook and cranny that's on the film and evenly developing every negative. Once the 10 minutes is up, you start the tap again and pour this solution down the drain. You never reuse black and white chemicals because the developer actually strips silver from the film and then gets washed out from the tank. So you don't wanna be pouring that back into the developer. Once the development solution is down the drain, you're gonna to wanna to run this under tap water for a full minute. This acts as your stop bath, or more simply put, it stops the film from developing any further. This fixer is not sensitive to temperature like the developer is. So regardless if it's 68 degrees or 72 degrees, you're still gonna use your fixer for a full six and a half minutes. So fill up your beaker to the 500 milliliter mark and wait for the stop bath to be finished. Once you're done with your stop bath, you can just pour the rest of the water that's left in the tank down the drain and then pour into the tank the 500 milliliters of fixer that you previously poured. Set your timer to six and a half minutes and off you go. Identical to the development process, every minute you're gonna wanna agitate the film a few times. Now once the fixing process is complete, Unlike the developer, you're going to reuse these chemicals, so you're going to want to pour the chemicals back into the original storage bottle. This does not affect the amount of time that's necessary to fix further rolls of film. So if it's your first roll or if it's your 10th roll of film, you're still going to only fix for six and a half minutes. Once you're done developing, stopping, and fixing your film, the film is now no longer sensitive to light, so you can take off the top. All that's left to do for the film is now wash it. And you can do this at room temperature for 10 full minutes. I like to put my tap on full blast and just set the tank under the tap. Every couple of minutes, I like to actually take the tank and drain out all the water just to be sure that there is fresh water hitting the film. Once the film is washed and the 10 minutes is up, all that's left is hanging your film to dry. But before you do that, you're gonna want to squeegee off the excess water that's on the film. So you can take your freshly developed film and just slide it out of, the, out of the reel. And it won't look like this, it'll actually lay flat when it's properly developed. This is just that roll of Ektar 100 that I showed you earlier. So once the roll is out hanging flat, you're going to wet your index and your middle finger on the other hand and actually run down the film like so. So if I was doing it with this, you would run your fingers down like that. This eliminates the excess water that's on the film, making the drying time a little bit shorter, and it also helps the film dry without getting any water spots or extra little kind of smudges on the film. But be careful not to actually touch the film with your fingertips if you're going along the side and you have a film of water, no pun intended, if you have a film of water on your fingers, it will be safe for your hands to touch the film. But if you're grabbing the film like this and putting your fingerprints directly onto the negatives, you run the risk of those oils sticking to the negative and then showing up once you scan the film. So just be careful with that. After about one or two hours, your film should be completely dry. Once it is, you can cut it into small segments and store it in your film files. If your film dries too fast, however, the film will tend to curl, making it more difficult to store properly and making it really difficult to scan. So if you can, dry your film in a relatively humid area. That will help minimize the amount of curl that the film has once it is dried. That should just about do it. From start to finish, that is how you develop black and white film. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I hope you guys have a great day and enjoy the video. I'll see you next time.